Our next speaker is uh, Dr. Dave Wildish, who's an emeritus scientist, um, and he will be speaking on the history of environmental and contaminants scientific work at the Biological Station. So welcome, Dave. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm glad to see that we have, at least in effigy anyway, a Prime Minister with us. Um, I'm sorry he couldn't come in person, but... Um, I want to tell you a little bit about my uh, life history. Uh, I was a research scientist at SABS um, from 1970 to uh, 2005. And I first came to St. Andrews with my family as a postdoctoral fellow from England in 1969. Our family has fallen in love with this local area. It's uh, a wonderful place for kids to grow up. Um, and it's a beautiful place to work uh, if you're a marine biologist, as I am. Um, when I came to St. Andrews, I found uh, two uh, general themes of research at the biological station. Um, fisheries related, oh, I didn't press that. Anyway, fisheries related and environmental science, and I'm only going to talk about the environmental research uh, here. So it's not all of the research that was done at the biological station. Um, the formal environmental research uh, group at uh, St. Andrews dates from uh, 1967 um, and has continued more or less to date, um, although it's... I'm sorry. Can you hear me at the back? I'm sorry. I'm talking into my toes here. That's my usual way. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, but I want to point out to you um, a successful pollution group uh, takes quite a lot of different disciplines. Um, that they're listed here, um, analytical chemistry, uh, biochemistry, marine and freshwater <coughs> ecology, toxicology, physical oceanography, and most importantly, library and information specialists. Uh, you need all of these people to uh, understand fully what an environmental problem is. And we've been lucky that much of the time we've had uh, all of these disciplines at the biological station. Not always at the same time, unfortunately. So um, uh, we've had to borrow uh, from universities at times. Uh, but essentially that's... Uh, um, the kind of group, ideal group, that uh, you would use if you were looking at any envir environmental problem. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just briefly go through some of the research that has been done in the last uh, uh, period when the pollution group was going. Um, and you can see from the... Uh, um, uh, research uh, thing at the top there, you can see where you can go for more information if you want it. And of course, you'd better go to the library to get this because uh, they'll get it for you very quickly. Okay, so here's the list. Uh, um, very early on, in 1970s, uh, we were studying uh, mine tailings in the Miramichi River. Um, there were problems there with um, toxicity of copper and zinc. These are two uh, metals that are very uh, um, problematic for salmon in particular. Um, they affect young salmon at very low levels, and so uh, they were extensively studied. Um, pulp mill pollution in Latang. Many of you will know uh, that there's a pulp mill um, uh, just outside St. George, actually, and uh, the effluent is... Uh, um, put into the uh, Latang. Um, and uh, we, we studied that and uh, uh, made recommendations, you know, about how it should be uh, um, dealt with now. Um, again, all of the more detail on this, I, c I've, I haven't got enough time to go into great details, um, but it can be found in, in references in the library here. Um, we've also studied uh, persistent chlorinated hydrocarbons. These are nasty chemicals because they're lipid-soluble and they stay in uh, mammalian tissue for a very long time. Um, they are some of the ones that we looked at uh, there. Uh, methyl mercury in uh, fish tissues was another 
topic that uh, w we studied. I should tell you an interesting story about that. Um, um, a student of mine and I spent a week, um, uh, at short notice, to go fishing in throughout New Brunswick. Actually, we went. Uh, uh, it was at sh such short notice that we couldn't actually get um, accommodation, so we slept in barns. But we did come back with a whole lot of uh, fish, uh, different kinds of, of, of fish. Um, Spruce budworm spraying in New Brunswick forests. Um, there are substantial effects on streams, particularly with the first chemical used, which was DDT. And as a result of earlier work, actually, than the pollution group, uh, DDT was banned. And uh, we went on to organophosphate pesticides. Um, we've also studied uh, acid rain on New Brunswick streams. Um, uh, another subject uh, which uh, has been uh, studied by us is the uh, effects of dredging and dumping in St. John Harbor. You may know that at Black Point there's a, um, a, a, a spoil site uh, which is annually uh, replenished um, and we studied the effect on uh, benthic organisms and fish in the St. John, in the St. John estuary, um, studied the Placentia Bay, Newfoundland fish kill due to yellow phosphorus, uh, the uh, oil spill in uh, Chedabucto Bay caused by the uh, loss of the arrow, um, in Belle Dune Harbour, uh, base metal uh, wastes um, uh, in which uh, cadmium was found and uh, toxic, the toxic muscle crisis in PEI, um, in which uh, our lab uh, described the uh, species of uh, uh, toxic microalga that was involved. And finally, the effects of salmon culture, um, both near and far field, and the chemicals that are used to control um, uh, uh, sea lice. Um, so I want to read my uh, final bit because uh, I think it sums up what I, I understand about this problem. The nature of most environmental problems can be boiled down to the tragedy of the commons. This concept was originally applied by Garrett Hardin to the fisheries where fishermen treated uh, the sea or river as a commons with unlim unlimited access by all. The tragedy of the commons can also be applied to the assimilation of wastes from industrial, municipal, or aquaculture sources in the sea or river, when the capacity of the receiving water to assimilate the waste is exceeded and environmental tragedy occurs. I want to emphasize, too, why it is important to retain environmental research scientists in government labs. It is because there is little incentive for industries or municipalities to police themselves. It is unlikely that university researchers with their typical three-year cycles of funding support can properly fulfill this function. I firmly believe that it is imperative for impartial government scientists to undertake the crit critical environmental research needed to regulate both new and old industrial activities. And taxpayers, that's you, should insist that research scientists be responsive to you. Um, finally, I've got one last slide. Um, it is about a book uh, which is coming out um, in 2012 or early 2013. The title is A Century of Marine... Maritime Science in the St. Andrews Biolog Biological Station, 1908-2008. Um, I urge you all to get a copy of this book. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Wildish. Um, it, it, it just astounds me that uh, all this research goes on and, and we sort of think that it can just disappear, go into a box somewhere. <laughs>